Welcome to FOSS North 2020, a virtual event. I'd like to thank our sponsors and our partners. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, we're coming up on the last session of the year uh, when Carlo Piana will talk about the Oniro uh, compliance tool chain. Um, this talk will be slightly different because Carlo could unfortunately not make it on time. Uh, so, so there will be a pre-recorded talk, but we have Alberto here who, who just showed up. Hi, uh, who will help us with the QA and also uh, Raul. Um, so I will turn on the video and then after that we will do a live QA with uh, Alberto and Raul. So enjoy. Good afternoon. My name is Carlo Piana. I am a lawyer with Array, an IT law dedicated firm in Milan. And I am the person uh, for this slot today. But unfortunately, due to unforeseeable circumstances, I cannot be live. So uh, I have pre-recorded this video to give you an overarching view of uh, the project, the challenges of the project, and what is relevant for understanding why we have uh, adopted certain solutions and we have come to the point where we are. So um, after my speech, uh, after my introduction, my colleague Alberto Pianon and Rahul Mohan will give you a more in-depth, hands-on, uh, review of the tool chain might be more enjoyable than by my, my speech. So without any further ado, quick wording on what Oniro is. Oniro is a new multi-kernel uh, operating system. It works on Zephyr, it works on Linux, and it targets mainly embedded devices and IoT devices as the platform. It is based on Yoctl and Bitbake, and uh, it has many uh, platforms as a target. It comprises thousands of packages at once. Our approach and the approach of our clients has been since the beginning that of operating in full uh, operating or uh, open source way. Uh, compliance an open chain was a fundamental building block of the entire project since day one. And we want also not just receive from the community, but to return to the community uh, everything. Oh, the most of what we do is done in the open, visibly to everybody. And we want to set sort of a, an example for others uh, in the same situation. So we want to set this, the yardstick as high as possible. It, um, it has started as an internal project, as a one way, but uh, since the beginning, the intention has been to donate it and we targeted the Eclipse Foundation. So after a few months now, we are almost in the process of completing the transition to the Eclipse Foundation, which is uh, a task in itself. Uh, the working group has already been established. I'm part of the steering committee of, uh, uh, of the working group. And uh, the development team not only has been uh, fully briefed, but has been involved in the beginning with uh, the development of the tool chain, the implementation of the strategy, with uh, everything uh, that we are doing, including uh, introduction to open chain and uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, besides Array, I am uh, myself and Alberto are partner with Array. I must mention Neutechpark. Neutech Park is a structure in Bolzano. Uh, they have been instrumental in providing uh, guidance, uh, project management, and even uh, development. And in particular, in particular, Peter Moser 
uh, has been uh, involved for, for a long time with a lot of effort in producing what we've done. And also I must mention Rahul, who is, uh, is going to, to be part of, of the speech later on, and Vaishali Abhad is a very talented and knowledgeable uh, uh, freelance uh, person that we have hired for, especially for this task, and uh, is uh, very experienced. The building blocks of uh, our technology are not very surprising in the, in the first place because we have decided, of course, to use Phosology and the scanners inside Phosology and scan code. Scan code is an alternative scanner for finding licensing information within the source code of the package that we are using. The technology, the, the, the tool chain that we are, use, uh, are using is uh, integrated, deeply integrated in the CI CD uh, tool chain via a GitLab um, pipeline. And so we make sure that uh, we can do uh, our, our, our analysis, our scanning and everything when the development occurs. Um, we have formed an audit team, most of which is formed by the person I've just mentioned. And uh, we have developed new tools one of which is Ellen for friends, which uh, will be discussed later on. And uh, another building block, another very important part of the, the scenario is SPDX. SPDX is our lingua franca, it is the interoperability um, master key to uh, bring results from one side to the other. And uh, another tool that we have utilized is Reuse. Reuse is a standard conceived of Free Software Foundation Europe that I will be discussing in a, in, a, in a minute. And we have even developed a dashboard. So let's discuss Phosology uh, in the first place. What it does and what it doesn't. It doesn't deal very well with the cut snippets. For instance, this is um, um, this is not an anti-plagiarism. So for that, we might be using um, Scan OSS, which is a, a tool uh, that uh, promises a lot. And it's not a comprehensive tool. It works in a pipeline. You need to provide input to it in the form of source packages. And that needs to be done through other, uh, other um, tools. And you also need, after uh, the pipeline, uh, you need uh, tools to generate the software bill of material, which is required to, as a main artifact to prove compliance and conformance with, uh, uh, with uh, um, OpenChain. And, but the main problem of phosology it is that uh, doing has it's meant to be done. Um, compliance work requires a lot of human work. So for the sheer amount of packages that we are dealing with, it runs in, in the uh, hundred, if not thousands of packages, uh, uh, it will require hundreds if not thousand main days. Uh, so we have decided to change approach to, to, if you will, to use an open source approach, like not to be reinventing the wheel. And so the decision was to try and take what has been done correctly and what is a reliable source of information for the same packages we are vetting. And, uh, well, it's, it's not a mystery. This uh, reliable source has been found with the work, the immense and very great, and the great work done by the Debian Foundation for Debian. Debian is to be considered, and we consider it as a trusted friend. And, uh, and the, uh, the, the, in uh, Alien for Friend, uh, 
uh, the friend is uh, Debian itself. So uh, we have this friend Debian that vouches for these packages that we don't know up front. We don't know where they come from. We don't know who they are and what they carry. And in the IP um, clearance parlance, we don't know under which conditions they come, under which license they come. So Debian provides this uh, information in very effectively, uh, not only reliable, but uh, in a way that we can process quite effectively. So we rely on uh, copyright licensing information that Debian carries on, and uh, which is machine readable. Uh, DEP5 is a machine-readable machine source of information that can we pass automatically um, after, of course, uh, we have found the correct uh, package. Uh, they have a license information, a copyright information as well, and we can even reuse their metadata. Um, the missing point, the missing bit, is to we have source, we uh, analyze the source, and we have to find the corresponding Debian package. And uh, what we, uh, and, and Neutech Park in the first place, has developed is a solution that we call Debian matching. Uh, it doesn't solve anything, but it solves a great deal of packages. So we have a, an, an initial, quite reliable uh, information for any matches and we can deal with a minimum set of packages that are not um, correctly attributed and not correctly um, uh, for which the, the license is not correctly being, uh, being found because uh, there are many things that cannot be right so you can uh, you, not always you find a correct or reliable Debian match uh, and if we are beneath a, a, a threshold, we decide to do otherwise. Not all packages are found in Debian. Debian selects a number, very large number of packages, but not everything. And not all, all the uh, Debian copyright information is machine readable. But with all these shortcomings, uh, using this helps a lot and saves substantial amount of human work, which is uh, the scarcest resource that we can have. Uh, may I just point out that another reliable uh, source of information, if used correctly, would be reuse. Uh, if, if more packages used reuse, uh, our job will be much more um, facilitated. There are some packages uh, which use uh, reuse, and of course we use reuse as a uh, for our first-party uh, code that we license and we release. But if if that was the case for all the packages, we could uh, rely on machine-readable authoritative uh, information by the same authors, by saying the copyright holder, hopefully, and uh, we can process it through uh, a phosology agent that can can interpret this information and, and provide a match. And uh, if not, we can also cross-match it with uh, the, um, the result of the scans. So this is, uh, this is an idea solution, but the work is not like that. Uh, and therefore, as, as I introduced before, we needed to produce a new toll chain. Uh, and briefly, I will describe how it works. It provides input in, in the form of source packages to Phosology for analyzing them. The toolchain also integrates scan code, as I mentioned initially, as a different additional source uh, for an additional scanner that matches and uh, uh, cross-checks the results for Phosology's own uh, uh, sc scanners. That provides more accurate findings uh, up front. And, of course, uh, it 
goes and searches for matching Debian packages through Alien for Friends. And if there is a reliable match, it imports it into Fosology. Um, it imports copyright and metadata. So that saves a huge amount of human work, which is the scarcest resource we have. In case, unfortunately not very often, we have a reuse compliant uh, package. Um, it has this uh, OHO um, uh, component that can also uh, do the same without without even redressing to the scanners. And that also saves a lot of human work. And uh, But it does other things uh, before and after, like passing results and passing information, transforming for producing an SPDX uh, version of the software bill of material. There are a little transformations for, for that because the, 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 the two SPDX are not exactly identical, but uh, that is the way we do. And uh, it also elaborates uh, progress and results that uh, of, of, of the auditing process for sending it into a, a dashboard. And we have uh, developed for monitoring, showing and forecasting how much effort is required to bring uh, the compliance effort to completion. We, as I said, initially, we don't want just to receive uh, stuff, information, work, uh, and software from the community. We want to give back the community. Um, the first thing we are, uh, we plan to, um, to, to release to the community in form, uh, and under a, a Nabachi licenses, uh, license, if at all possible, is, uh, and for friends are the, the process to uh, finding matching and, and finding uh, um, license information through independent and reliable sources. All the compliance documents, the procedures, the artifacts, the IP policy, and etc. The dashboard that we find uh, really useful and it's uh, it's been uh, in, for which the Eclipse Foundation has been quite impressed, I must say. Uh, software bill of material. Virtually nobody publishes that for for legal reasons. We don't find any of these reasons. Uh, we are working in in the full open. As I said, everything uh, under the Apache license, if if it's possible. Also, we want to publish databases. One is the databases of the decision for Fosology, so that they can be uh, somehow imported by others and reused. And also, we are working on uh, cooperatively develop a database of obligation. You know that open chain requires that uh, for all licenses, you must determine which is the which are the obligation or the conditions uh, for, uh, that must be complied with for achieving compliance with the license. And we are uh, planning to. Uh, to use, reuse, and publish it. Also, um, if we if we uh, encounter a, a, a something which is not correct in the reuse, because we cross check uh, the license information and the reuse information, we can provide and we aim to provide a fix or a merge request in case uh, uh, for some packages that we. Are, um, are forking or are developing, uh, we want to uh, contribute our, um, in the form of a merge request, uh, the uh, reuse information for these packages which are important for the project. And ideally, if there is uh, there are resources, we want to provide upstream the information to clearly define. So a, a long introduction, a long explanation, and uh, as I said, I won't here for taking uh, questions, but my colleagues will be uh, able to fully uh, answer everything. And I thank you for your attention and pass the floor to Alberto and Raul. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Bye.
So, there we go. Let me figure out how to get the presentation back into some sort of <laughs> state here. Uh, Alberto, do you want to present anything? or are mm. you... Yeah, yeah, this is supposed to be a, a hands-on session. So, um, uh, I do have a presentation, but mainly I will show you uh, the, the tools uh, live uh, and uh, uh, collect uh, questions uh, together with uh, Raul and also Peter that is here, I see, uh, in the chat. Uh, so, uh, Super. so I've handed over presentation to you. If you want to share your screen, there's a little button next to the, the one where you turn on and off your camera. Okay, I see. Um, but then I leave the floor to you for a while. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's start from the end, uh, because uh, this is the, the fanciest uh, thing that we, we have in our tool chain, I mean in the, the dashboard. Um, so this is where the final results of all of our work, uh, uh, work the, the tooling work, uh, work uh, the tooling part, uh, the, the audit team part, uh, uh, ends up uh, uh, and uh, is displaying uh, is displayed in a in a in a comprehensive uh, way. Uh, so um, uh, as Carlo mentioned, uh, uh, Oniro is a complex project. Uh, we have a complex uh, build matrix, uh, so we don't have just one target hardware board, but we have multiple target boards, uh, multiple kernels, uh, uh, Linux, Zephyr, FreeRT OS. Uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, kind of images, uh, firmware images that can be built, and uh, so we we need to uh, collect all those data and to aggregate uh, them in order to to uh, um, manage uh, mainly the compliance the the, the audit uh, process uh, without uh, uh, getting lost uh, in uh, um, uh, in the middle of. Uh, uh, package variants, uh, variants uh, pertaining to, to specific uh, hardware uh, boards, etc. Uh, so um, the the top of the dashboard shows uh, the progress uh, of of the audit work. Uh, here, uh, th this is the for for the release candidate of the Jasmine release. This is the first uh, the one point zero point zero release of of Oniro. Uh, as you see here, everything is green. But uh, this is not uh, uh, where we started. Uh, when we started, uh, there, there were uh, a lot, uh, a big uh, red bar here of uh, files that did it uh, to, to be audited in Phosology. Uh, this, uh, for instance, was the, the progress in November. Um, uh, so um, uh, this shows, uh, if you are familiar with Phosology, you, you know that the green color means uh, files uh, that have been audited. The red color uh, means uh, files that need to be audited. And the gray color needs uh, uh, files that do not need uh, any audit because they don't have a license or copyright information inside. And uh, provenance, uh, uh, this is always green because uh, uh, we know the, the provenance of uh, every uh, component that is, uh, is fetched by, by Yocto. Uh, so we are okay here. Uh, you see here the results of the, let's go back to the, yeah, the final results. Uh, the, the results of the automated scanners, uh, meaning the scanners uh, found in Phosology, scan code, uh, uh, and uh, th this is, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the, there are, of course, a lot of uh, results here. Um, then uh, in, in this part of the dashboard, we have uh, the, uh, the results of the audit work. So uh, this is the input. Uh, then there is Phosology, the audit team, and this uh, is uh, the the output. Uh, so we have uh, uh, this uh, this uh, main license types for for every package, the every component that is uh, found inside Oniro, and then uh, the all the licenses uh, that are found uh, in in the Oniro uh, project uh, uh, calculated on a per uh, source file uh, basis. Uh, then um, you see some numbers here, um, just to, to show you, uh, we have a build matrix uh, with 15 different target machines. Uh, this will be, uh, is expanding because uh, in the next uh, uh, 
uh, release uh, uh, that it will be uh, the, the code name will be goofy uh, uh, there, there will be uh, even more uh, target machines uh, for every target machine you can build uh, different reference images uh, and uh, here you see the, the releases uh, because we keep also the, the history of the the releases and the packages that are found in the in different releases the year see you we have uh, we are in um uh l l l quite with a, we are near to to general availability release um and uh, this part you see uh, for each package uh, the, the some information in what which images uh, you find it which machines and which releases uh, scan results the audit results and you see here an icon uh, with different colors like the, the the one you find on cell phones maybe more or less and uh, uh this is the the the, the degree uh, represents the degree of uh, debian matching of the component so if uh, we have uh, a good debian matching this is fully green uh, if you have a partial Debian match, uh, we have a uh, yellow color. And if there is no or, or poor Debian matching, we have a, a red color. Uh, this is uh, intended for us to, to know which packages are well known upstream and uh, which packages are um, uh, need maybe a, a more thorough, uh, thorough review by the audit team and by the legal team because they they are not uh, found in the Debian distribution. Um, here you can uh, look for, for, for many things. Uh, you can look for, for single packages. Uh, you can see the history of a single packages. Uh, uh, actually, Yocto uh, does not have packages. Uh, packages are, are just uh, created uh, uh, post mortem after build uh, yocto has uh, recipes uh, and a recipe can evolve over time even keeping the same uh, uh, version number so uh, to uh, manage uh, this uh, uh, complexity and the variance that we find in the same recipe i'm sorry if the colors here are a little bit um, i hope that you can see uh, the variance here uh, so we we see the the history of uh, of, uh, of uh, the packages, uh, this uh, version was a variant of the recipe was found in the beta release. Uh, and uh, you see the, the common sources uh, uh, that are used uh, for to, to, to build the package, uh, to build the component. Uh, uh, then we have some uh, specific files that are found only in this uh, release uh, because some uh, CVE patches are being added. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the the old uh, uh, the old uh, uh, release, the alpha release, and the latest uh, is this one. And you find here uh, all the newer new, newest uh, patches for 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 the CVEs. So in in this way, we are able to uh, keep track uh, of the evolution of uh, of uh, each component uh, without uh, having to deal with. Uh, uh, tens of uh, different variants of the same uh, component for for across the whole the whole bit matrix. Uh, we have uh, also added an experimental um, support for CV check uh, that we improved uh, um, uh, for for each package. Uh, you you know if uh, there are uh, some uh, CVEs open or if the status is uh, uncertain and needs to be, to be manually checked. Uh, and um, uh, this is uh, something that um, is supposed to help uh, both the, the, the audit team and uh, the security team uh, to, to manage uh, all the components. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the, 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 the last uh, uh, step of uh, our workflow. Uh, the workflow is uh, kind of uh, complex. I probably can go into the details now, but uh, um, basically uh, the main uh, the main uh, um, issue that we uh, found uh, is that uh, having a, a, a lot of uh, complexity, we needed to uh, create our own uh, tool chain to collect the metadata from Yocto 
from, uh, I don't know, uh, 30, 40 different builds of the same uh, release uh, to aggregate data and uh, to find uh, the matching uh, uh, in the Debian distribution uh, to apply scan code findings uh, uh, and to import them into Fosology uh, and uh, uh, wait for, for the audit team uh, activities and then collect back uh, data from Fosology and uh, and uh, and uh, show them in the dashboard. Um, the the less uh, uh, fancy, uh, a less fancy thing, but uh, uh, it's uh, uh, kind of uh, necessary, uh, uh, is the, the the bill of materials that is more or less uh, the, the, the same information uh, that is showed in the packages plus all the details uh, in SPDX format. Uh, uh for for all the source components uh for now we decided to, to publish the, the bill of material in in as in the form of a, a gitlab repository and uh um yeah the, this is the the latest uh, uh release and uh here we have all the the spdx files uh, for all the source uh, components that are found and uh, um, we decided as Carlos said uh, to publish uh, these results uh, because uh, we, we we think that the spirit of this project is uh, uh, being uh, as open as possible so we we did a lot of uh, work for for for, compli for the compliance uh, targeted at, 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 at uh, Looking what's inside the reference images that we that are uh, uh, that are the results of the the, the project, and uh, so we we publish uh, them, and uh, th those data are free to 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 reuse uh, and are intended to be reused by by device makers, by adopters of the Neuro project uh, uh, to um, yeah to to do the compliance work for their projects. So if they include uh, some of all of the components uh, of the reference image of a Neuro in their project, they, they, they have uh, uh, all the compliance work already done by, by us. And um, yeah, this is a uh, um, quick glance uh, of, uh, of, the, of uh, the work we've done. And um, I, uh, I don't know if uh, Rahul is here and maybe is willing to, to present a little bit uh, his work. Uh, or probably he had some... I cannot see Rahul along, along no, the... I, along I, the I hear that he had some, some connection problems. So. Uh, uh, no so... But I do have some questions though, if you're willing to take them now. Yeah. Or, or something. Yeah, please. So, so one is from Henrik Sankliff. Uh, you have a process for updating reuse tags after a scan. Does this imply that we cannot fully trust the reuse tags? Uh, we don't have an automated process to do that. Uh, we uh, actually, uh, Rahul uh, is, uh, is uh, doing uh, a work uh, to um, uh, yeah, to do some pull requests uh, upstream, uh, for example, even also in the, the for the Linux kernel uh, for uh, some inconsistencies uh, or missing information or wrong information that uh, he he found uh, in the Linux kernel uh, as well as in other uh, components, uh, and so we will uh, uh, push upstream uh, upstream the, the the fixes and the corrections that uh, but we don't don't have uh, an automated uh, process to, to do that uh, um, uh, does this imply we cannot fully trust the use tax I mean uh, if you deal with the huge packages um, you you realize that uh, uh, things are are tough I mean uh, uh, the license of uh, some files uh, are not straightforward. Uh, there are confusing uh, situations, uh, probably because uh, some uh, uh, files are have been imported a very long time ago into a project, uh, and uh, it's not sure where they where they come from. Uh, even the, the Linux kernel, uh, the, the history of the project uh, dates back uh, not to the, the very beginning of the project, uh, but 
to, to when uh, the, the, the versioning, uh, the, the newer versioning system had been adopted. So, uh, for instance, we found some, some components that do not have a license or have an unclear uh, license situation in the Linux kernel. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a huge work. Uh, also in Debian packages, uh, in the, the Debian copyright information Debian packages, we found some mistakes, some inconsistencies, uh, some things that were missing. So uh, I, I think that we should think about it as a process. Uh, that there is no uh, that, that there is no point where we can tell. Okay, we we have done. We are done because uh, there may be uh, always something to to, to fix the correct. Um, then uh, I I see other questions. Uh, can I just uh, um, I guess we have a segue yeah, yeah. from the Max Nail question there about the the contribution back. Uh, very ready to able to contribute license comparison in the reuse for turn upstream package. Uh, yeah, oh, we're almost there. I mean, uh, if Raul were there, <laughs> uh, he could. Uh, but um, again, uh, we are in the process. Uh, uh, the, the 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 pipeline uh, the, for, for us was first uh, we had to review everything, and uh, now we are close to the the goal. And so we have reviewed uh, all the packages uh, very in depth uh, for for all the, the the first release of the project, uh, and then we have a list uh, of things to push upstream. Uh, and uh, yeah. The, you will try to do that in the next uh, uh, few months. Um, so, uh, Nico Ricken uh, sharing SPDX. Oh, okay, this is uh, uh, a part I, I didn't uh, explain because uh, it's not already there. It's in the plans. Uh, it's uh, uh, about what we are working on right now. Uh, we are uh, designing uh, or analyzing the way of which we could design uh, a database, a public database uh, and a public API where we can publish uh, all the SPDX data and all uh, other metadata that we are collecting uh, so that uh, those data uh, may be consumed by um, device makers, uh, neuro adopters, uh, but also by, by, by anyone uh, who needs uh, uh, those, uh, those information uh so uh yeah this is uh uh yeah the, peter and i and others are 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 trying to to figure out which is the best way uh we are evaluating uh also existing tools uh, like uh, sw360 uh so if anyone is willing to be involved uh, and to, to, to say something uh, interesting about it, we are open to any contribution because, I mean, it's an open source project and this means that you are free to, to collaborate uh, if you want. And um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, is... Yeah, please, please. Yeah, I, I saw two questions about the other tooling. Uh, we maybe want yeah. to comment or, or on the no also ORT is in the plans uh, because uh, another step uh, of uh, our pipeline uh, uh, is uh, uh, to um, for now all the audit work has been done on the the source uh, part uh, so the the source components uh, we now have to uh, handle the the binary part so uh, uh, we are uh, trying to figure out which is the best way to um, mm, uh, reconstruct the dependency graph, uh, taking into account that we do not have a single project. We, we have a complex build matrix, so existing tools are, yeah, maybe they, they need to some adaptation or some, um, I don't know. Uh, so we are uh, analyze, analyzing also that aspect. Uh, uh, how to reconstruct a dependency graph for the whole project, for the whole bid matrix. Uh, and then uh, uh, for sure, um, we will try to integrate uh, uh, ORT for um, license compatibility checks, uh, for policy compatibility checks. And um, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, uh, the, 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 the only problem that we have is that uh, um, uh, 
we, we still need to aggregate data before inputting those data to to some uh, external tool uh, so uh this is uh the the the, the problem that we are continuously uh, facing in this project. But uh, uh, yeah, we will for sure uh, uh, do some integration with ORT. And um, well, similar one about double open as well, higher up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing is that, um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, for, for what I, I, as far as I know, double open, uh, uh works uh, for, uh, say, uh, not regular, but, uh, standard Yocto project. Uh, Oniro is, uh, um, stretching Yocto to do something, uh, kind of different. Uh, so, um, having, a, a complex with matrix, uh, uh, means, for instance, that we cannot uh, rely on um, uh, uh, internal uh, tools, uh, um, I mean, uh, bitbig classes, uh, because they uh, would produce uh, results, uh, different results uh, for every build. Uh, but we have, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 builds, and uh, uh, we still need to put everything together. So for now, the strategy is to build everything and do, to have some tools that uh, after having built the whole bin matrix, collect all the data from all the build directories. We use uh, um, a bitbake wrapper called Teamfoil. It is an official uh, bitbake wrapper. So you can parse uh, existing build directories uh, after the build, uh, the build process has been uh, has ended. Uh, for, for now, we are using this approach. Uh, but for, for sure, we are continuously evaluating other solutions. So uh, also double open is a, is a solution that we will uh, look into uh, for the future. Thank you. So I think that covers all the questions that have already been asked. Uh, but if somebody starts typing or raises a hand, Fairly quickly, I, I guess we have time for a few more. We do the auction thing again, going once, going twice. Then I'd like to thank you a lot. And then you have to, to extend uh, the thanks to, to Carlo as well for, for the initial mm -hmm. presentation. It was very interesting and enjoyable. Thank you for, for hosting us.